How many people would you have to kill to forge a sword of iron? After all, people have iron in their blood, right? We use it to transport oxygen from the lungs throughout the body to places we need it the most, like the brain and the muscles. But instead, why don't we take it out and forge it into a sword? How many people would that take? Is that even possible? Let's find out. The average man has four grams of iron in their body, the average woman has three and a half, and the average child has only three, according to the Iron Disorders Institute. With this in mind, we should probably be efficient and target men specifically. The average long sword is between one and one and a half kilograms. Since we all want an impressive sword, we should go with one and a half kilograms. One quick conversion later, and we see that we need 375 men dead to forge our sword. But let's see where we can go with this. Using the average proportion of 1.01 women to men, we could be economical and salvage almost 16 swords per hour given the current death rate provided by the World Factbook. Or we could funnel all of the infants born into a sword-making factory, giving us 1.9 swords per hour while also curbing the overpopulation problem. However, we are overlooking a very important issue that inhibits the practicality of this, purification. The iron in the body will mostly be attached to undesirable things like hemoglobin. If we just incinerate people, they would basically become their component parts, a mess of garbage compounds which are very difficult to separate. We need to be a little bit more elegant to do this right. One of the more efficient ways to extract the iron from these babies could be to dissolve them in concentrated hydrochloric acid and then boil off all the excess. What you should be left with is a mess of metal salts, iron salts included. These can then be added into a solution of sodium borohydride, which will precipitate small iron particles, according to the paper by Glavy et al. These particles can then be caught with a sieve, smelted into ingots, and forged into swords. Of course, getting our babies to the factory is an even bigger can of worms. International shipping laws are a hassle as it is, so you can imagine that these people would be even bigger sticks in the mud when it comes to mailing babies. For example, the Republic of Niger, a country with one of the world's highest birth rates, expressly forbids the international transport of perishable, non-infectious, biological substances. In reality, you would need a network of underground, illegal baby traffickers in order to make this process work. That is, if it would even be economical. Although the company would provide an excellent opportunity for employment, the production of baby swords would quickly flood the market. Since there isn't much of a demand for swords in the first place, your startup company will most likely go bankrupt. Not that I would recommend trying to start this company. After all, I'm no expert in the field.